I'm not really a huge fan of what it's done to my face in this image, but for today's video, we're going to be taking a look at the newly released Flux.2 dev image generation model. Now, when Flux came out back in the day, I don't remember specifically when, but I did do a video on it. It was very, very exciting because the quality of the generated images that it was able to produce, especially considering the time in which it came out, were extremely, extremely impressive. So seeing a new version of this model is quite exciting. And for today's video specifically, we're going to be running this on a single 24 gigabyte video card. As they do mention down here in some of the usage capabilities, that it is possible to run this on something that has only 24 gigs of video RAM. And being that that is, I suppose, more accessible for the local AI enthusiast, I find it prudent to showcase it in that regard. Of course, there is a release announcement post for this new Flux.2 family of models. And I say family of models because as we scroll down here, we're going to see that the model we're testing today, Flux.2 Dev, is just one of many members of the Flux.2 family. And something I find very interesting, which I know a lot of other folks very likely will as well, is the upcoming release of Flux.2 Klein, which is going to be an open source Apache 2.0 model distilled from the Flux2 base model. So this could be very, very interesting, especially if it is truly open as stated here with this license. Now, I want to specifically mention something about the license because this video is not monetized. It will not be monetized. There's no sponsors or anything like that. If we go ahead and actually look at the license that is included with the model on Hugging Face, the Flux.2 slash dev model, if you receive any direct or indirect payment arising from the use of the Flux dev model, it is technically in violation of these license terms. So what that means is any other YouTube video you see actually running this model on camera is technically in violation of this license, assuming they have monetized their video or do have sponsors on it or something like that. So I do just kind of want to throw that out there. Now there are two ways to run this within a 24 gigabyte video card. There is the first method right here, which we'll use as they say around 18 gigabytes of video RAM, where the text encoder is actually going to be run remotely. So this wouldn't necessarily be entirely locally run as kind of having everything on the system. If you turned off internet access, it would still work, but this will get your VRAM usage a little lower and will likely be faster considering that the other alternative down here, which is what I am actually using for this video, has the text encoder and everything being run system um, locally on this system. However, the text encoder is being offloaded, so it will be fairly slow to actually generate a single image. But being that that is going to keep everything completely local, it is just a modified version of this script to have a nice little Gradio web interface on it that we will be using to test this model. And for anyone who's kind of curious about, okay, how the heck do I actually run this? My truthful, honest advice would be to copy paste this script, give it to an LLM of your choosing, tell it what operating system you're using and the specific hardware you have available to you, assuming you have a 24 gig video card and ask it to specifically list out the steps, the dependencies and every other thing you need to know on how to run this locally. And you very likely will be properly guided through the way to actually do so. So with everything out of the way there in terms of kind of like the semantics, let's just go ahead and now run the Gradio vibe coded web interface that I have for this model and keep an eye on some of the video RAM utilization here. So this is a 5090 laptop GPU, which of course has 24 gigs of video RAM. And as we load this in, I clicked the wrong key on the keyboard. We can now basically see here we have a nice little web UI for flux.2 dev. And let's just do a agent poop man test. <laughs> so we are close to getting the generated result. Wow. Well, that is, uh, <laughs> okay, we'll full screen this. In terms of like statistics and things, how long did this take? It took 237 seconds, which we can see is like three minutes and something seconds, 40 seconds or so, which is kind of slow, but keep in mind, this is a laptop that's doing the work, so that's not bad. Okay, we can see the text is rendered properly. Agent Poop Man, of course, flushed twice, and we have an individual in a tuxedo in what seemingly would be a luxury bathroom, although I do have to question the perhaps privacy considerations that went into the actual design of said bathroom. Regardless of that, there does seem to be some action-esque um, things right here. He is holding what I would assume to be a double-sided golden plunger. Quite interesting. Though I will say, um, in terms of things we're missing visually here, it doesn't have like the traditional movie poster style text on the bottom, like directed by coming date and things of that sort. Regardless of that, um, that was quite a 
fascinating result. So now I'm asking it for a screenshot of a retro 2007 game similar to RuneScape. We're basically asking it for a RuneScape screenshot. Now this is something I tested with Nano Banana Pro, which came out almost like perfectly one-to-one. -one. I'm very interested to see how a model like this actually handles doing this, considering the significant decrease in size and the fact that it's running locally. You know, <laughs> this is actually not, truthfully, I was concerned this would be just terrible. Obviously, this doesn't look exactly like RuneScape, but I will say the actual background scenery, this does kind of emulate the wilderness of RuneScape, even some of the way that like the floor graphics look, or the ground, not the floor. Um, the full rune armor is perhaps where things begin to fall apart a bit, but I will say this almost looks like a morph of the original RuneScape and then the 2007 RuneScape, or old school RuneScape as it is now dubbed. They do have um, health bars with hit splats, and the text full rune is there. Now, we do have a very good-looking Windows application icon to make it look like this game is being run in an older version of Windows, which is actually not too bad in and of itself. And then we have some... Um, <laughs> Clorp tone! <laughs> we have some, like, um, file looks good, and RuneScape 02 2007 looks good. It falls apart kind of with these two things, but overall, this result is actually better than I had expected it would be, so that's not bad at all, and in terms of statistics, that took 225 seconds, so a bit quicker than our first result, of course, the Asian Poop Man. Let's do something else. We're now going to test it with a photograph that looks like it was taken during the construction of the Eiffel Tower. However, in the photograph, there's going to be someone who clearly does not look like they belong there, and it is kind of implied that they're a time traveler or something kind of sitting in this specific photo. All right. That is definitely, it looks like, construction of the Eiffel Tower. We do obviously have this individual taking a selfie. The sunglass is interesting the way it chose to do the reflection on the lenses because while the photo is in black and white the lens reflection is in color somewhat interesting but overall i will say that this has the potential for a lot of disastrous artifacting i don't know if that's the correct term in terms of just the massive amount of metal beams that would be contained in the eiffel tower it did a really kind of decent job if we focus on this arch right here just the way that everything seems to be properly oriented i don't see anything obscenely out of place or mangled which is kind of cool and then obviously we have the folks in the period correct clothing and then this individual in um, this space suit which is something you may see in a west hollywood uh, nightclub on a weekend so with that this is very interesting uh, let's try some more <laughs> Now this can use reference images, so let's go ahead and give it the photo of myself with the Honda Beat, which you're likely familiar with if you've been watching the channel, thank you. And we're going to go ahead and just have it use some aspect of that image in its generated result. I'm not 100% sure how this is going to turn out, but it will at minimum be a demonstration of this using a source image to take a character out of it and then put it in its generated result. Now because this may have specific differences in terms of how much VRAM is being utilized and things when actually using a reference image I am going to go back and show the statistics here in terms of video card utilization all right it was twice as slow but it seems like this is about to finish up and keep in mind the reduction in speed and increase in VRAM would be due to using an actual image as kind of a hmm. that's actually pretty good this did a much better job than I would have expected. So let's take a look at the source image that was given to it here. So we have a reference point for how it actually did. So here on the right is the source image, where's obviously myself with this little Honda Beat, which used to be mine. And also just in this museum room and everything like that. And we asked it to go ahead and make it look like the character from this image was angrily hitting a laptop contained on a display shelf in a computer store. Really, it div. This is a quite a fine job. Let's let's get into it. The operating systems shown on the laptop do look proper. It does look like I am quite angry and hitting a laptop in some regard or another, perhaps typing on it rather aggressively. There does seem to be some other things contained on the shelves down here, as well as these little placards which would contain pricing and information about these specific laptops. Now, interestingly enough, it kept the actual background scenery from the source image, so we're still contained in the same room, but you can see the car's completely gone. 
Um, the actual cars on the wall and things like that are the same. I'm not 100% sure if I need to specifically be referencing these images by the actual file name. I don't think I am, but regardless, we're basically going to try a multi-image combination test here where we have this room image and we're asking the model to go ahead and place the man and the robot from this image into this image. Okay, um, you don't, <laughs> you don't, you don't, Let's talk about the good. The arcade machine placed in here, as well as the red chair from the original image, is quite well done in my opinion. Now, I think it may have been confused, or I may have confused it, where it seemingly placed the elements from the rendered image inside the real image. I wanted the inverse of that, where it placed this element inside the rendered image. Regardless of that, um, the table is placed in here along with some retro looking computer parts, so that is good. I'm not really a huge fan of what it's done to my face in this image, but regardless of that, it does seem like its ability to take specific items from one image and place them rather decently into other images. I don't remember what I was saying, but it does a good job at that. So, uh, okay, we're going to try an image as if it were taken at a LAN party in 1998, and then obviously the rest of this prompt has been kind of enhanced using an AI, just telling it like, okay, use these best practices to make this a better prompt. Okay, we did denote flash photography snapshot, and I do want to make specific note that this does kind of look like it was taken with flash photography, which obviously would have light reflecting like that off the ceiling, off the monitor right here, and making these faces or the sides of the beige boxes facing the camera appear brighter. So it did do a good job of that. We did denote that there should be four individuals in the photo, which does work. Even the shoes don't look very mangled. There's a bunch of soda cans, perhaps too many wires considering what would be required for this and I can't really I'm trying to like look around as if it would make a difference but I can't see the rest of the elements of this basement very well but it does seem quite basement-esque if you will there's pizza boxes everywhere on the floor on the tables and the folks seem to be intently um, engaged in whichever specific game they're playing so overall this did a good job and this is definitely an improvement based off of having tried this prompt with significantly older local image models in the past all right, now I'm just going to try some like random terrible prompts just to see how the results are. So we're doing a flash photography snapshot taken inside a bar during a bar fight. <laughs> That's actually pretty good. I should look at it first. Something I'm going to note first and foremost is some of the background elements of this are actually rather realistic in terms of the bottles on the shelves, the mirror behind the bottles, the amount of people here. I don't see any like extremely disturbing appendages here I suppose could be said um, and there is a bar fight going on obviously it seems like this individual would be one of the main ones involved in this fight there is a camera taking a photo with flash above it and the bartender seems to just be calmly amused in the background. I want to do another movie poster now, so we're going to have it create a documentary-style movie poster for the movie Robomance, in which basically someone falls in love with a humanoid robot, and that is the movie poster, along with some other defined things here, such as the way the title should be written, the font, and the style of font, etc. So we'll see how it goes. Again, movie poster would generally have text on the bottom here. I suppose we didn't specifically mention it should have that. But regardless of that, the actual quality here is what we would expect based on our prompt where it has a slightly grainy style to it. A weathered humanoid on the couch being touched by um, the person who it is engaged in the robomance with. And everything else here looks fairly consistent in what one would expect for a more realistic image. Um, realistic with quotes around it, obviously. Okay, overall, I guess I don't have a ton to say about this one. I want to try something more cartoon style or more digital graphics or art where we're going to have it do a modern minimalist infographic about the flat earth disk and it is a navigation map for that. So this will be interesting to see as in some of the sample images that I saw in the initial announcement post, they did have some more infographic style or kind of digital asset images. So I want to test this as well. This is actually nice. I just like it because it's clean and I do like the way that it actually has drawn the quote unquote 
great ice barrier. We had the center point, and this was obviously kind of a play because it said the official navigation map of the flat earth disk. Something that I should probably note, which I didn't even really actually think to mention, which bodes well, is the fact that the text is very clean and legible. This is obviously historically something that was rather difficult for image models to do, especially ones that can be run on local hardware like this. So seeing how cleanly it did the text here is really nice to see, and the fact that I didn't even really think to mention it just kind of bodes well for that capability. So for the last test, it is just going to be a simpler prompt, which is basically just a portrait photo of a group of individuals at a dinner party, but one of them has just had an embarrassing thing occur, so I want to basically have it focus on their face, realizing the uh, specific embarrassing thing that they did have occur. All right, well, that's extremely disappointing because it definitely did not adhere to my prompt, being that all of these folks look to be in around the same mood. Uh, this looks like a, it's like the finance... <laughs> Uh, dinner party. So that's going to conclude our first look and local test of the Flux.2 dev model. Truthfully, the license was kind of a turnoff at least, but this video again is not monetized due to some ambiguity in the license, but basically it said like if you show using the model at all and you are making money from that in any regard, it is technically against the terms of that license. So I want to be more cautious than not. Being that that is the case, I am very excited for the upcoming release of this Flux.2 Klein model, which is touted as open source Apache 2.0, distilled from the Flux.2 base model, so this may be a very potent option to run locally and perhaps quite freely in terms of the license constraints, so that is something I'm very much looking forward to. Overall, this model was of course quite good. It was running within a single 24 gigabyte video card and it should be made note that this is using basically like a quantized, ver quantized version of this model. Don't take that fully scientifically, but the point in mentioning that is this is not using the full model in terms of its full potential here. This is something that is designed to run in a 24 gigabyte video card. So if you had a much larger amount of video RAM, you would inevitably get much higher quality results. The speed was not the best, but again, it is possible on a card like this to use the remote text encoder, which would inevitably speed things up quite a bit. But I wanted everything to run entirely locally as... I have not actually done a test in a while that has things running locally, so I always try to do that if I can. Unfortunately, today was one of those days. So with that, that's going to conclude our first look at this model. It's definitely very good considering what it can be run in in terms of the video RAM constraints. It's good at text and the ability to actually take pieces of one image and integrate them with another source image is quite interesting as we saw in some of our tests. So that's going to wrap it up. If you have any questions, please feel free to leave them in the comments once you've subscribed. And thanks for watching.